In this video, I want to write a super simple reverse mode automatic differentiation engine in Julia for a simple computational chain using closures. For this, let us first define the function we want to differentiate, f of x, and this shall be given as the exponential on the sine on the sine of x. So in our case, it takes a scalar and returns a scalar by first applying a sine, then applying the sine again, and then finally applying the exponential. I'm here in an interactive REPL session. So by hitting shift enter, I can register that function and then we can query it at 2.0. Now let's also implement its symbolic derivative. Let's call this f prime of x. And in order to get that, we have to apply the chain rule. So let's start with the outermost layer. The derivative of the exponential of something is that exponential of that very something. So exponential of sine of sine of x multiplied with the inner derivative, which will be cosine of sine of x, multiplied with the innermost derivative, which will be cosine of x. Again, shift enter, and then let's query that function at the point 2.0, and we get a particular numerical value. Let's check whether that one is correct by using finite differences. So let's query the function at the particular point and at a very small value. So for instance, 1e minus 8, and then subtract the function at that very point and divide it by 1e minus 8. And we see those values are approximately identical up to some rounding errors. Okay, now we want to use reverse mode automatic differentiation. And in order to do so, we need to provide reverse rules or backpropagation rules for all the functions that we're using. And in our case, this is both the exponential as well as the sine. Let's start with the sine first. And in order to register these reverse rules, I want to define a function I want to call the backprop rule. And this shall be a function that dispatches based on the primary function we call it with. And we can do so in Julia by having an empty first argument, which we then say is of the type of the function we want to dispatch it for. So let's say colon colon type of sign. So this function shall be queried if we plug in the sign as the first argument without opening closing brackets. So just the symbol of a sign, the function of a sign. And then we provide it also with a primal input, x, the position at which we want to evaluate that backprop rule. And then as with every automatic differentiation engine, we need a primal pass. So we need to first evaluate the original function. And this will be done by saying y is sine of x and then I want to define a closure. This closure is a locally defined function that can capture variables from the outer scope. That sounds a little bit abstract, but I think it will make sense in a second. So let's define a function and call it the sine pullback. And the pullback of the sine takes the cotangent on the output. So it takes a y cotangent and then maps it to an x cotangent. So a cotangent on the input by taking this cotangent it got and multiplying it with the cosine of x. If you want to know why this is the particular rule for the sine, I have a video linked up here. Then let's return that x cotangent. Then let's have an end in order to end the local closure function. And then the outer backprop rule function shall return the primal computation as well as the pullback function. And then let's also make an end statement here, shift enter to register that. Then we will overload it and also define a backprop rule for the exponential. So let's do type of and then exponential with the argument x. Again, first a primal computation. Here it is just y is exponential of x. And then let's also define the pullback, exponential pullback applied to a y cotangent, so some cotangent information on the output. And we will backpropagate that to the input by taking it and then multiplying it with the derivative of the function. So this is something that only works for scalar functions. I have a playlist linked up here if you want more general derivations for backprop or reverse or pullback rules. So here in that case, we can multiply it with the exponential of x. Then we can make an interesting observation. This is something that we already did before. So here we already have the computation that y is the exponential of x. So we can just reuse that. And then we also see 
why I said closure, because this function captures the computational value we have at y and can then also use it outside of the wrapper function. So this one then also returns x cotangent and let's end it. Then here, let's also return y and the exponential pullback and end the function, shift enter, registers it. Now we can build an automatic differentiation engine which builds upon the backprop rules. And for this, I want to implement the primitive for any reverse mode automatic differentiation, which is the vector Jacobian product. You could also call it just a pullback. I want to call it here the VJP. And the VJP takes a function for which it should be differentiating. We will soon see how we can map the function f into the format it requires it. Here I want to call it on a chain, but being a list of operations. And this is also the first limitation here. This what we do is a little bit limited to computational chains, which are just a subset of computational graphs. So for instance, you could not use that in order to train neural networks. This will be a little bit more tricky, but it's also not too complicated. Okay, so this VJP takes a chain as well as a primal at which it should evaluate the chain and then provide us with a pullback. Okay, then we first define a local variable and I want to call this the pullback stack and this will be an empty list for now or an empty vector. And then I also want to say the current value and set it to the primal. And then as with every automatic differentiation engine, we first do a primal pass and say for operation in chain by looping over the entries in the chain vector, we say that the current value and the current pullback is given as the backprop rule on the operation evaluated at the current value. Okay, let us dissect that. So we have the backprop rule, which in Julia is a general function for which we have two implementations. So it can dispatch based on the type it is called with. If the first argument is sine, then this function is called. If the first argument is exponential or exp, then this one is called. And thereby here we use the proper rule. And then we also hand over the primal value in order for us to then get back the output primal value as well as a pullback function, a closure. Okay, so we have the current value, then we can push the current pullback into our pullback stack. So in the pullback stack, we push the current value, or sorry, sorry, the current pullback, and then we can end that for loop. That's the primal pass. So let's say this is the primal pass. And now we have all the pullbacks in our stack, and then we can define a function, which shall be the pullback, which takes and cotangent and this is now another closure which will capture the pullback stack and allow us to reversely traverse through the computational chain a couple of times. So here we will also say a current cotangent value and say that this starts with the cotangent and then we have to loop through the pullback but in reverse order. So let's say we have a backward rule, a back closure in reverse of the pullback stack and then we get the current cotangent as the back operation applied to the current cotangent and then let's end the for loop and this closure function shall then return the current cotangent let's end it and then our vjp function shall return both the primal result so the current value as well as this pullback closure function. And maybe this also presents the idea of reverse mode autodiff a little bit better in that we kind of have a mechanism which understands how the computational evaluation of a function works and then combines primitive rules for a smaller function into a larger function. Because in a sense, this pullback is nothing else than also these closures we have here, but for a larger chain of computations. Important chain, not graph. Although of course we could also implement that for graphs, but that would be a bit more complicated. Okay, long story short, let's call it and say we will get the out value as well as a back function by calling the VJP on the chain. Hmm, how does this chain work now? Well, I said we have a vector 
or a list and we need to plug in the function we want to call. And this one will be sine, sine, exponential in order to chain the sine with the sine with the exponential. And then we want to evaluate this at 2.0. Okay, and I probably also need to register the VJP. So let me shift enter this one here. And then let's also do this and we see what does it return. So this is a little bit more tricky. So what we get back is a computational or numerical value as well as another closure function or anonymous function. And if you see the numerical value, so this 2.201 is exactly what we also got from an original primal pass. And then how do we get the gradient? And this is by calling the back on the value 1.0 because we get the gradient if we call the VJP with a one cotangent. And then applying this, we get us this value and we see this is exactly the same value as we got with our symbolic differentiation. And we can also write some syntactic sugar and say function which shall be called val and cred. So this is kind of a high level wrapper to automatic differentiation which takes a chain as well as a position x. And then what it does, it basically it produces a y as well as a pullback by calling vjp on the chain and x. And then it gets the derivative or the gradient, however you want to call it, by evaluating the pullback at the cotangent 1.0 and then it returns y and the derivative. And this is now a bit of a nicer front end for someone not being too familiar with the inner workings of reverse mode automatic differentiation. So let's call val and cred at the same chain. So a vector with sine, sine, exponential, and then at 2.0, here we go, we get both the value as well as the gradient. We could also done something like f at 2.0, comma, f prime at 2.0 and this gives us also the same value. This channel is supported by Pasteur Labs and the Institute for Simulation Intelligence. Click the link in the video description to find out more how they merge machine learning and simulation in order to reimagine the scientific method. Also a big thanks to all my Patreons. If you also want to support my vision of free education on advanced mathematical topics, you find the link to the Patreon page down in the video description. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, then please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. There is more awesome content on automatic differentiation. Here you will now see similar videos and I hope to see you in one of the next videos.